We interrupt this program with an important diversion. All throughout this chapter, we've been talking about operators. Operators are functions on functions. We have seen operators all over the place. The differentiation operator, we've used it in combination with logs, with exponentials, other operators like that, in order to solve problems. But it's time to focus a bit more on differentiation and how it acts as an operator, because it does so in more than one way. There is more than one differentiation operator, and it's time to look a bit more carefully at the distinctions between them. Consider, first, the usual or ordinary differentiation of a function with respect to an explicit variable. Let's say you've got a function, it depends on x, we can consider differentiation with respect to x as an operator. We're going to give that operator a name. We're going to call it capital D, but it really is the usual d by dx, thought of as an operator that acts on a function f. Now here's the important thing. This differentiation operator, capital D, takes a function f as an input and returns df, where f and df are of the same type. The ordinary derivative of a function is, again, a function. So, for example, if I take f equals sine of x, what is df? This capital D applied to f is the derivative. It's cosine of x. And it's a function just like f. Well, so what? Big deal. What's so important about that? Well, there's another differentiation operator that we've been working with quite a bit in this chapter and the last. This is implicit differentiation. That operator, which we use a lowercase d to represent, is meant to return differentials, not functions. This implicit differentiation, lowercase d, acts on a function f, a function that might depend on more than one variable. And it returns a differential, df, that is not of the same type as f. For example, if I take that same function, f equals sine of x, and I hit it with the implicit differentiation operator, lowercase d, what do I get? I get df equals cosine of x dx. That implicit differentiation operator returns a differential. That is different than the function sine of x that I started off with. But why are we bothering with this? What's the big deal? Okay, there's two different differentiation operators. We use a uppercase versus a lowercase. Why? What does it matter? Which is better? Well, it depends. For example, if you want to differentiate more than one time, you're going to want the ordinary differentiation operator. In fact, this gives a hint at what you can do with operators that take functions to functions. You could do algebra with them. Operators that can be iterated algebraically have exponent rules. So, for example, if we take this ordinary differentiation operator, capital D, we can square it. That does what? Well, it takes d by dx and squares that. That's formally d squared over dx squared. And what is that? That's really the second derivative operator. That is an operator that acts on a function f and gives you the second derivative of f. But we can think about that not as a completely new operator, but rather as d squared. You do the derivative, then you do the derivative again. Because we're using this ordinary derivative, we get a function as its output and we can apply the operator again. Now, let's keep going. Let's do this differentiation again and again, applying this operator not one time, not twice, but n times. The nth power of d gives the nth derivative as an operator. d to the n applied to f gives the nth derivative of f. Well, that's great, and you can do that as many times as you want, but let's 
push the boundary a little bit. Let's go down to the zeroth power of the differentiation operator. What is d to the zero? Well, you apply the differentiation operator how many times? Zero times. What does that do? It does nothing. And we're going to give it a special name. This operator, d to the zero, is capital I, the identity operator. Why is it called that? It's called that because it does nothing. It returns the same function. Capital I applied to a function f gives precisely f. Just like the number one under multiplication is an identity. You multiply something by one, you're not changing it. This is the operator version of that identity. Okay, so we've got powers of this differentiation operator, capital D, but so what? Why are we bothering with this? Is this ever going to be useful to us? We're pretty close to the end of our story in this volume. So if it is going to be useful, it's going to have to be useful to us in the future. And that's precisely where things are going to show up. Here is a bit of a hint. Let's say that you have a polynomial differential operator, something that can be written out in terms of powers of d, something like d squared plus 3d plus 2 i. That's like d squared plus 3 times d to the 1 plus 2 times d to the 0. Okay, that can be factored just like a polynomial. In this case, this can be factored into d plus 2i times d plus i. So applying either of these differential operators to a function f will give you the same combination of derivatives in the end. Why might that be of use to us someday? Oh, it's going to be very helpful when we learn about differential equations. We can write such equations out in terms of operators using powers of d. For example, d squared plus i applied to f, set that equal to 0, that is a differential equation. Something that we could write out more explicitly as the second derivative of f is equal to minus f. That, incidentally, is a very important differential equation. Something that models a simple harmonic oscillator or a pendulum that is swinging back and forth. We don't need to know anything about that right now, but remember this, remember this, because we are near the end of Volume 1, and when we get to Volume 2, we're going to start thinking more about differential equations. And when we do that, it will be very helpful to think in terms of differential operators and their powers. That is what this Ordinary Differentiation Operator, capital D, is going to be good for.